Hi everyone, I'm very happy to be here today to give you a, a sneak preview of a new feature that's coming into the Power BI Desktop April 2017 update. It's a very exciting new feature in the data transformations area of the product. It will show up within the query editor environment and it's called uh, Add Column from Examples. And what it actually does is that it allows users to define new columns within the query editor just by providing sample values for what that output column will contain based on existing columns or transformations based on those columns as well. Let's go and take a look at how this feature works. So right now I'm inside the query editor here in Power BI Desktop. Let's uh, give a, a little bit more room. Let's collapse this task pane. So I'm looking at a, a table preview that actually came from a web page. Let me actually show you where it is coming from. It's coming from this Wikipedia page that has a list of states and territories of the United States. So if we scroll down a little bit, you'll find this table preview uh, that has the, the full list of states and territories. So what I actually did already as a preparation for this demo is that I imported this table through the uh, web connector in Power BI Desktop and I landed it in the query editor. Now we would actually like to extract some interesting data from this table. Uh, for instance, I would like to only keep a few of the columns so I'm going to remove the other ones. I'll keep just those. And let's go ahead and clean up some of the column names. For instance, this guy is the state. This one is the abbreviation. We have the city's capital, the city's largest. Let's fix up that column header. We have the statehood. And we have the population as of 2016. All right, so now let's go and do a couple of more things here. The first thing we would like to do is clean up the state column. So if you take a look at it, uh, by and large, it looks all right, but it has a few values that we need to clean up. An example would be Massachusetts, which have a, a link, actually happens to be a link in Wikipedia uh, that's uh, in between the square brackets with an E. So let's think about how we would like to clean this up. Generally, or before this new cool feature, the app called by examples came, uh, online, you would have had to think about uh, how to actually get rid of those extra characters. So for instance, you could have thought about doing a split column by delimited operation using the square bracket and then discard the second chunk or everything that came after the first bracket. Uh, or you might have wanted to do a replace value operation. You basically will have to have thought about the strategy that you want to follow to clean up your data. Uh, uh, and uh, instead of that, what you're going to be able to do going forward with these new transformation is going to be just tell Power BI Desktop what operation or what output values you would actually like to get and Power BI Desktop will figure out the right operation or transformations to apply. In order to do that, we're going to go to this new uh, add column, column from examples menu. So we have a few different options in here. You'll see column from examples that includes a drop down menu which allows you to do from all columns, so taking example values that are derived from, from all of the columns that are currently in the preview, or we could do it also based on a specific column selection. In this case, we'll go ahead and do from all columns, which is also the default action if you just click the upper half of the button. So once we go in, uh, you see this special mode. This is one of the first operations in the query editor that actually happen in line within the query editor preview because it's strongly related to the data preview that you're seeing in the main editor window. So as opposed to something else that actually you would do through a, a pop-up dialog, such as a split column operation or maybe replace values. In this case, you're seeing this new experience. So there's a few different things going on here. The first one, of course, is the data preview area, uh, which you can see with these six columns that we already had uh, before this, uh, this transform. The second thing you can see is this menu on the top, which basically gives you the title of the operation that you're doing. It gives you some brief description of what you can do and then it has commit and cancel buttons. And of course we have help, uh, which will actually probably take you to this video that you're watching right now, so that's pretty helpful. Uh, and then we also have a feedback button because of course we really care about your feedback about uh, this feature and um, hearing from you about what's working and what not. Now there is this other column called column one right now in the, t in the uh, query editor preview area that it's empty. So what you're gonna be able to do uh, in this column is start typing the values that you would like in the output column. So basically your examples. Uh, we by default put you on the first cell, but you can actually edit any of the cells. You see that as I move down and I start providing an example, the entire row is highlighted. So if you type in the fourth row on this column one, 
it actually expects to derive values based on other columns that are also in row four in the actual um, um, columns of data on the left. So for instance, in this case, let's go ahead and type Alabama in the first row. And uh, just by doing that, Power BI Desktop decides that what you're trying to do is probably just duplicating the first column, the state column. Now we actually want to refine that, so we need to provide a second example, uh, which in this case, let's go and pick a representative one, which would be the Massachusetts one. So here, rather than duplicating the value, we're actually gonna go ahead and just delete the stuff at the end that we wanna discard. Once I do that, you see that it actually commits that value, and uh, it actually changed the column name. Now the column, it's called part of a state. So this is interesting because what happened behind the scenes is that uh, based on the two examples that we provided, Power BI Desktop is analyzing uh, all different alternatives uh, of combining or transforming the existing columns. Uh, and it's deciding, if you look here at the, uh, at the header of the operation, uh, that it's applying a text before delimiter operation. So it's basically taking everything within that first column, uh, all the text that comes before the first square bracket, left square bracket uh, in, the, uh, in the text value which is exactly what we wanted, right? So we're gonna go ahead and commit that. And boom, with that we have our new column. At this point, if you look at what gets generated, we get a new step that's called column from examples, and that it actually contains a add column uh, transformation. So it basically contains a custom column operation that uh, reflects that text before delimiter operation that we detected through the sample values. Let's go and do a couple more. We're gonna go and do another column from uh, all examples, from all columns. And we're gonna actually type Alabama in uppercase. Uh, we actually also need to clean up the Massachusetts value. And once I do that, we suddenly do an uppercase operation based on the part of a state column that we just defined. I'm gonna commit that. Uh, and uh, let's go and do a couple more. So besides text transformations, we also support most of the other uh, transformations already supported in the query editor for other types of columns. And we also do smart things like type coercion and uh, figuring out that fields that actually are text but could be interpreted as dates, they actually expose all of the date transformations. So for example, I want you to take a look at this statehood column, which is actually a text column that says something like December 14th, 1819. So let's go ahead and create a, a column from example based on the selection, based on this specific column. And let's do something like typing December in lowercase. So just by doing that, I move to the next row and you see that it starts actually uh, extracting the actual, month, the actual month based on the statehood column. But it is not doing it as a text transformation. So just if you pay attention to this, uh, you'll see that we're not just extracting the text that comes before the, the period. Uh, which would be just the initial for the month, we are actually extracting the full month name. So what's going on behind the scenes, again, if you look at the generated formula here on the top, is that we are uh, first taking the statehood column, we are applying a date conversion, so date.from of that column, and then we are applying a date.month name of that date value. So with that, we get the actual uh, month name uh, based on that column. Uh, even more than that, we could do things like uh, if I select the statehood again, uh, we could do things like extracting the actual uh, year information from here. So I could say something like 1819. Uh, so it's also extracting the year. So this is an interesting one because here there would have been two different options. One would have been extracting L, uh, the entire text that comes, or the, 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 the last chunk of text that comes after the last space in that text column but we actually think that it is more robust to uh, first turn it into a date and then extract the year component, which is what we did in this case. So even if in the future there's another variation of that date value, we would still try to first parse it into a date and then we will extract the, the year component. Of course, all of the other date transformations or most of the other transformations, especially for dates, are available. So something that you might also wanna do is extract the day of the week so we can type something like Tuesday for that first row, uh, just because I know that December 14th, 1819 was a Tuesday, not the, uh, I was actually there, but somebody told me that it's a Tuesday. So just by typing Tuesday, then we're gonna infer that 
um, we need to extract the, the weekday names or uh, the, yeah, the names of the days for all the other dates. So let's do that. All right, so that actually gives you a pretty good um, understanding of the type of operations that you can do. You can derive values from existing columns, and we support most of the transformations that uh, we actually support through uh, the uh, query editor UI, the query editor ribbon, and so on. We keep adding more and more. Uh, some of the, the biggest omissions right now that we hope to address in a future release are things like index columns and also conditional and, and binary columns. Uh, so the other thing that I wanted to show you also is uh, that you cannot only extract data from existing columns, but you can also combine uh, data into a new column. So let's go and take a look at how to do that. I'm going to also go and do a column from examples from, from all columns. And I'm going to do something more complex. So in this case, we could say Alabama. And in parentheses, we put the abbreviation, comma, whose capital is Montgomery, was founded on a Tuesday in December 1819. So there, I'm combining a bunch of different fields. I'm going to commit that one example. And see that in this case, the generated formula is way longer, is way more complex. But what we're doing is a text concatenation of the state column with the parentheses, abbreviation uh, column, then close paren. Uh, we have that text, the capital. Actually, there was an error here. So if, if you look down, you see that the capital word was actually not properly picked up. So we can go and uh, fix it up. So instead of whose capital, in this second case, we'll provide a second uh, a specific or explicit example. And once we do that, it actually fixes all of them. So now it looks like we're actually uh, concatenating the exact text whose capital is. And then we take the capital column. We take uh, the was founded in uh, on a um, text, and then the day of the week, the month, and then the year information. So exactly like we want it. So in this case, in order to achieve this, you would have had to either do a bunch of one-off extraction operations and then concatenating them with uh, text in between, or a gigantic, in this case, like a two or three line um, formula if you do it through the custom column dialog uh, with, a, with a custom expression. So just like that, we're able to combine uh, text, and it actually looks exactly like we, we expect. And uh, again, we are generating formulas, so uh, we're actually not hard coding anything based on the sample values that you provide. In the future, as you refresh your queries and the data changes, uh, in previous steps, we will actually reapply all of these transformations because, as you can see, we have references to other columns and so on. So a pretty exciting new feature. Uh, we're very, very excited to bring this new feature to you in the April Power BI desktop update. We think it is really important, and it will change dramatically change how many users work with the query editor today because of a couple of different aspects. The first one is that um, not all users will be able, in all cases, to figure out the right strategy uh, for how to actually extract data. They might know what the end result they want in that column, but they might not know which steps to apply. Or even if they do know what the steps they would like to apply, uh, there's complexity in either finding those steps through the UI uh, for those that are supported, like finding them through a query editor ribbon, context menus, and so on. But also, there's complexity in case that some of those operations are not supported through the UI, and you actually have to go and define custom columns to concatenate the data or to apply other transforms. Uh, this is actually just the beginning of a long journey for us in this space, but we're very excited. We are going to continue adding more and more transformations over time. Uh, right now, as I said, we support most of the transforms that we expose in the UI, but there's a few more for us to do. And we also have more work to do around uh, composition and concatenation of multiple operations. Right now, we support between two and three levels of concatenation of operations in some cases. But uh, we want to continue improving this over time, and we will also try to improve the relevance of the, the, you know, the automatically detected option uh, based on our decision uh, logic that we have. So everything that you can do in terms of playing with this feature using that beautiful feedback button that we added in that, in that command bar would be extremely helpful for us. We're going to be listening to that feedback and making this feature better with every new monthly update. And uh, as I said, looking forward to your feedback. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoy this feature as much as we are enjoying uh, delivering it and implementing it. Have a good one.